Welcome to the Yoga Healer Podcast. It's me, your host, Kate Stillman. And on today's show is a monologue by Jutta Graf, who is from Vienna, and she lives in Potsdam, Germany. And Jutta came into my courses first back in Body Thrive and Living Ayurveda, and eventually we became a yoga health coach and then went into Awake Living. And the thing I discovered about Jutta is that she implemented everything I taught, which is so unusual. It's so unusual to have this level of studentship where someone can uh, receive and absorb and implement and discover. And, and Utah just so unparalleled in that. And so she shared her experience with the Awake Living members who are implementing the Master of You book, that curriculum. And she shares how much it changed her life. And she shares the sequence of how. And it's, it, this is, I got to say, it's pure gold if you're willing to really connect with exactly where she is at in each stage of her journey as she's recalling her past. And Utah's breakthroughs happen on so many levels. Uh, and, and in the end, at the level of, of entrepreneurship and becoming a powerful CEO uh, in a family company. And it's, it's so important to hear the very beginning stages and what changed in her experience. So with Master of You, what I found in writing the book and leading the members in the course, the Awake Living course, was that, you know, I wasn't even living the system perfectly, in all honesty. Like, I was doing what I was doing. Uh, and, and there's something, you know, when I wrote Body Thrive, I wasn't living the habits perfectly. And I found that certain members would do a better job than I would. Just had higher adhikara, uh, had more aptitude for implementation faster. Uh, and and there's something about studentship that's wonderful that way of like being able to receive and implement. And so what I found with Yuta is that she totally inspired me <laughs> to take my implementation of of the five powers of the five elements up a whole other level, a whole other level of dharma. And it's really impacted it. And so I'm deeply thankful for Yuta for her studentship for her implementation of of this strategic dharma life planning system of master of you uh, i hope you enjoy i hope you enjoy her share thanks yuta today i would like to share with you my experience with the space element it was pretty radical my approach so i think it would be maybe interesting and another thing is, I thought, if I do that radically, I will never have to do it again. <laughs> it was wrong. Uh, and I remember I said, uh, I was proud and said, oh, I've done it. All of it is done. And then I said, oh, you are fast. And probably she knew, oh, you have to do it again and again and again. But I didn't. I thought if I've done it once, it will be done forever. But still, it was uh, was uh, something I experienced, so I shared now with you. 2015, 15, I sold my house, house in Austria. I bought that house and we renovated it and put, bought brand new furniture and wallpapers all over the place. And it was my husband's taste because I wanted that he likes to live here and that he's supported in the environment. And I thought, why not? I had it always kind of simple and white. And I thought it'd be interesting maybe for me too to live in such an environment. And I felt it could be something for me too. So uh, everything was heavy and dark and uh, like lots of furniture. And I really didn't feel so comfortable. But what can you do? I thought now it's... I have chosen that way to live and now I have to stick with it at least uh, for a longer period of time. But, but then the space element allowed me to change everything. So I said to my husband, I would like to clear space here now and let's take off everything and take away all of the furniture. And he said, okay. I mean, he was a little bit skeptical, but he said, okay, if you want. And what do you want to put in? I said, I just want to have four sofas, cream colored, Little Japanese tab tables. I want to keep the kitchen, the office furniture because they were functional and classically beautiful furniture, and the rest goes out. And he said, Okay, let's do it. So one day he went away and I said, Okay, I take off the whole wallpaper. That's what I did. I took 
of the wallpaper all over the house in one day. The next day we took all the furniture out of the house and we bought we bought uh, just four sofas, uh, little tiny white colored, green colored sofas, two Japanese tables with it and a Japanese futon bed with organic material and rice mats to sleep on and that's it. That, oh no, another one, a big wooden table and four chairs and that's it. And that's how we still live, uh, by the way. But. Uh, that happened in four days, so we completely were new in four days here and it was an amazing feeling for me and I could breathe and I could could feel more expensive and and another, another thing, we took all of the stuff I had from Austria from my childhood and from my mom, nobody looked at anymore of uh, very old stuff with we, we I went through all of that too very quick and but uh, very much with do I really spark joy or not? I took the time and we took all of that out too what wasn't sparking joy anymore. I took all of the clothes I had and, and threw it away. I felt already from far away that doesn't spark joy anymore. Uh, so, in pretty much four days to one week, everything was done. Everything was completely changed. And a couple of days later, there was a big explosion in our relationship. It was like unbelievable, suddenly coming. Everything was brought onto the table. But it was not like a, not like a usual discussion you have or like... It was like, it was like an explosion and immediately was calm. And it was so purifying for our relationship. It was so purifying and suddenly we were standing on a neutral point with each other again. Suddenly we were allowing each other to, to grow and expand and to, to explore who we want to be, who we were meant to be, how we can do that together. It was so powerful and beautiful. So this was the one experience with the space element. The other thing what happened right afterwards, or let's say a couple of months later, was a coaching call with Kate. And I wanted to speak about something completely different, but I said suddenly I want to paint again. I couldn't even believe that I said it. It just came out and she said okay when do you take time and how do how much how many paintings do you want to make give me numbers so i said oh i was was kind of confused time okay mm, i thought i don't have time and i said i don't have time because i have dogs mother job uh house garden husband and she said but you need to take time for your for your passion for your desire if you want to create art. So, okay, I thought she's right. And, but I felt that resistance. I had such a resistance and I couldn't overcome it. And I had to smile and laugh because, you know, she opened, I could observe myself. She opened up my, my comprehension for my restricted mind, for my mindset, for my, for my tight kind of thinking about me, my time and my life and that I was only tied into serving and not never thinking about what I want and what how I could use my life then for myself too. I thought always I have to be there for all the others and I never allowed myself to read a book for example or I thought if I paint it's a spare time and it takes away from time what I could do for others or or that I couldn't be with my mom or with dogs or with my husband. I, I didn't allow it. And it was so powerful. Afterwards, I had another uh, discussion with my husband about it. And he pretty much was seeing what I was fighting against and uh, what struggles I had and that, this, that I wasn't balanced with the way I saw myself. And uh, next thing what happened, I think a few days later, uh, two acquaintances of my husband, uh, whom I coached 
came to me and wanted another coaching session and I never asked for money. I did it all for free because I was afraid I wasn't good enough to ask for money or that I wasn't ready yet to ask for money or, or who knows what. But uh, this time I knew I wanted to paint. And if I wanted to give myself the permission to take time away from all my other obligations to paint, I need that mental bridge that I earn money to have enough time to uh, finance my life, of, uh, finance my livelihood, and not to be worried about if I paint that I could maybe work for the company, do something else, which I would uh, rather uh, need to do because of my income. So that's what I. Did I ask them for money? And they said, I said, I can't do it anymore for free. But uh, they said, okay, how much do you want? And I thought, I need one year worth of salary, monthly sal salary, a number, that I can really give myself the permission to paint every day. And that's what I said. I said them the sum and they said, fine, okay. That's what happened. I couldn't almost believe it, but that's what happened. I coached them once a week and uh, I had made a contract immediately with the amount and they paid it immediately, all of it, the whole sum. And then I felt safe. I felt safe that this time I could pro uh, I can use now for painting or uh, exploring the arts because I have, I earn money. I have a fixed salary. So um, that was very powerful, that, that step, stepping into asking for money first and they say, it, saying yes to it and making a contract and getting the money immediately, all of it. And I started to coach them. And the next, <laughs> the next thing is they were very successful. Every structure, uh, they applied was very successful and I, I didn't want to make a business coaching ex actually consulting but it turned out to be a business uh, coaching so they were in a quarter they were so successful and my husband observed it all and was kind of thinking oh my god they they move forward and we don't and he sat down one day with me and said listen I have to speak to you this was set in September so around about half a year later after I started, he said, I see that success those guys have and I would like you to do the same thing for our company. You use your whole energy, your strengths, your talents for uh, coaching uh, those two guys, beautiful for them, perfect for them, but I want you to do the same thing for us too, for our company. So. Uh, I would like you to lead our company and to make the same thing happening there what you uh, what you were able to do with these two men or what they were able to do and what I suggested them to do, let's say it that way. So please uh, try to think about it. And I said, yes, of course I do it because I wanted, I did it anyway all those years already trying bits and pieces, but he, he, he didn't want to let a woman do it because his imagination of a man's role was that he is a leader of the company. And sometimes he did, sometimes he was questioning it and it was stagnating all the time. So I took over the company in September 2018 and soon we were very much discovering our potential as a couple and that we are actually a power couple. And he was supporting every step I did. And yes. I had allergies as a kid and as a teen and as a young adult. Through Ayurveda, I uprooted my allergies. Otherwise, I would have also had allergies through my adult life. My allergies were the horrible, super snotty, itchy eyes, puffy face variety. The doctors tested me and found me allergic to dust, to pollen, to cats, to dogs. Until I learned Ayurveda for allergy relief, I had no idea that there were underlying imbalances that were provoking my allergy attacks. The side effects from the medicine left me, well, 
medicated. Ayurveda understands the language of allergies, the root causes, and what allergies are trying to tell a person. For those allergic to your ecosystem or your pets, pause and think, why are you allergic to nature? Are you so out of the loop that your body recognizes local pollen as allergens? If you have pet allergies, do they get worse with certain seasons? While it might appear you are allergic to nature, chances are you're out of sync inside your body. My experience as an Ayurvedic practitioner and leader at yogahealer.com since 2000 is that out of sync bodies become reactive bodies when an internal tipping point is reached. This tipping point is often reached when seasons changed and internal imbalances have built up. What type of allergies do you have? Did you know that the underlying cause of allergies is unique to the individual, both their Ayurvedic constitution and their imbalance? This is how Ayurveda works with diseases and imbalances. What is the constitution, prakruti, and what is the individual's imbalance, or reason they have allergies, vikruti? Pharmaceuticals, on the other hand, work like a one-size-fits-all approach. And we all know that one-size-fits-all never really fits. Pharmaceuticals that are antihistamines never target the root problem. Allergy drugs have side effects. From a holistic perspective, the side effects aggravate the root problem. Yet, leave the allergies untreated and you suffer. What is the way out of this loop? Through symptoms, allergies reveal much of the vicruity to the trained eye. The symptoms lead you back to the cause. If you know how to interpret your symptoms, you'll find the cause. In Ayurveda, either vata, pitta, kapha, or ama are usually involved. Sometimes multiple doshas plus ama are at the root. Always come back to the question, why is my body reactive? And what if I could help my body become less reactive? Wisdom is power and allergies are optional. Included in my all new Allergy Relief with Ayurveda course is part one, what type of allergies do you have? Understand your symptoms and the doshas. Part two, allergies, ama, deeper imbalances, and autoimmune disease. Part three, rewilding your gut, your lungs, and your skin. And part four, allergy relief, vata, pitta, and kapha solutions. I hope you'll take a look at my new Allergy Relief with Ayurveda workshop, whether you have allergies or someone you take care of has allergies. If you wanna help yourself or someone else, I know you're going to love it. It's at yogahealer.com forward slash allergy dash relief. And the good news is as a podcast listener or a YouTube watcher, you get 65% off with this link. So yogahealer.com forward slash allergy dash relief, and you can get 65% off my new allergy relief workshop with Ayurveda. Cheers to an allergy-free existence. This is Kate Stillman with yogahealer.com. Here I stop now because this is a story for our next little video. But uh, I think it's a nice uh, way to express here and, and remind myself again what happened in a very short period of time and how I experienced time in a different way. And I always discussed with my husband, why was it so different that we experienced as a child our time as being so long a day? Because we didn't have our ego always, our mind chatter speaking and, and our thought patterns were not caught up in, in ideas about ourselves in that way as it is when you're an adult and you want to achieve something. And... Uh, it ex extremely changed my perception with time. I really, uh, I'm very aware now and I'm very much seeing that I have just a certain uh, years left or maybe not, a certain amount of time left. And I self-reflected a lot and saw how I used my time thinking I did my best, but I didn't actually. And how I even schedule now time to be present with my mom and not just being with her. Like she, I let her sit all the time with me. No, now I do my work. I'm focused onto my work and the things I have to accomplish first. 
and then I take time for her every day at the same time and I see how it's programmed into our behavior, how my, my mind and my body needs certain things at a certain time. For example, it's not only the food, but yes, food is one thing, but it's also the mental capacity at a certain time of the day I can achieve so much more because I trained myself now to do it at that certain day, that certain hour for that uh, long period of time. For example, for one and a half hours, that's my time period, I, I try to do it. And if I don't do it and something happens here in the house, I try to avoid it, but it can be, of course, then I feel, for example, like in the last quarter, uh, my husband was lots at home, so I need. I saw how I slipped out of my of my habitual patterns, and that my mental capacity was not as good as it was before. And how I needed to go back into that pattern again, and that programming of my of my of my mental structures. And uh, yeah, we tried to do it. I, I fell a little bit out of it, and then we we found a way to do it. And now, since life is starting to get normal again, he, and he's a lot more away again, I can do it again better. But still, uh, I realized you have to be very flexible, and uh, you have to. Do it anyway, even if life situation change, you, but you can be flexible and can rearrange it. But it's such an enormous, powerful tool uh, everybody should use that you see your capacity and that you see what you are able to do with your body, your mind, that you can recalibrate, that you can program yourself and that it will do things you wouldn't believe, yet that your, your, your body, mind soul connection is so strong that you will experience time in a complete new way. That's how I felt and that's how I experienced it. And if I fall out of it a little bit, I can see how mm, itchy, how uh, uncomfortable I feel actually. Yeah, that's it for today. But a little reference I have here. And this is page 144. It's about optimizing your calendar as a spiritual practice. That's what I want us to look maybe up. Restructuring your calendar to, to support your milestones, bolsters your spiritual growth. Your dharma, dharma requires time management to achieve your vision. And that's what I experienced. The dharma requires time management to achieve your vision. Because, you know, I didn't know what dharma is. And I didn't know what my vision or my desire was. But I had to experiment and test it. And that needs, really, it needs a time management. Uh, you, you are not ready and said, this is my vision. Maybe, probably. I wasn't. I needed to go step by step. The closest I could grasp, I took, it was art. And I started one quarter to experience art and to explore it and to test it, to experiment with it. I, I bought material. I was uh, looking for communities. I was researching. I tried different subject matters. And one day you have to say, that's it. Is it now something? Is it my zone of genius or is it zone of excellence or even less? And that's what I did. And this needs really time management. And yeah. Now it's enough. I think I, <laughs> I talked enough now. I could go on again forever. But thank you for taking your time now. I appreciate it very much. And I wish you a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Namaste.